Hello there, I'm Thomas from She Died in a Parking Lot and today I'll show you how to make a classic Blade Runner brass synth sound on any polyphonic synthesizer. Let's go! Alright, let me show you how I made the intro synth sound from my cyberpunk video. If you haven't watched it yet, I put a link somewhere in the video. So first of all, let's hear it. So it's really a classic of cyberpunk and Blade Runner type of sound, very cinematic. So let me deactivate all the FX to show you what I used. So first I took a preset in Diva from UE, it's the Jupiter Blade R Brass, so definitely a Blade Runner reference right there. And I just tweaked it for my needs, so I just tweaked a bit the envelopes and, uh, the, um, and the oscillators, I think. Without any effects, it sounds like that. Already really great. I added some EQ, just a low shelf, to boost the bass and give it a little bit more warmth. Then I added Super VHS from Baby Audio, which is a fantastic plugin to emulate well the sound of a VHS. So basically, it's a lo-fi plugin with a tape drive, a dirty reverb type of sound, and the drift is basically um, the drift you can have from the tape, which add a bit of vibrato. And finally, uh, a delay. So the comeback kit from Baby Audio, really great delay as well, just to add more depth to the sound. So that's basically it, really a simple synth sound with uh, just some EQ, a bit of drive, lo-fi and uh, reverb stuff, a delay and voila! Okay, let me show you how you can do that type of sound with any synth. Let me duplicate my track here and deactivate the FX. Okay, today I choose to show you how to do that with the Noisemaker synth from Tal, because, well, it's a free synth. I'll put a link in the video description so you can download it for yourself. It's free and it's easy to use. It's one of the first synths I learned, well, how a synth basically works. The layout is really simple and comprehensive, so let's do that. First of all, you'll want to keep both oscillators to a saw wave. You'll want to tune them down to minus 12, so it's an octave down. Let's detune a bit this one. Alright, something like that. Let's put both the volumes at noon for now and put it in poly mode. So let's just have six voices. Alright, then it's where things get interesting. We're gonna set both of the envelopes almost at the same levels so the amp envelopes should be something like that and let's try the same for the filter envelope all right now let's tune down the cutoff just a bit Then we're gonna use the two buttons right there. Basically what the keyboard button do is that it sets how much of the filter will open in the higher notes. So the filter has a relative position to the notes and not just a fixed frequency position. 
So let me show you what it does in the higher notes right there. We said higher. And if I put it to maximum. So you can hear it's a bit subtle here. The full position, the high note is brighter than in the zero position. So let's keep it here. And we're gonna use the count, so it's the contour knob and it's used to set how much of the filter envelope will be applied to the cutoff filter. So without anything. So let's put it somewhere around here. Okay, and oh, I forgot to deactivate the sub oscillator. That's much better. We're just gonna do a bit more tweaking with the AD envelope here and the LFO over there. We'll want to have something similar to the envelope we have just below. And we're gonna put that on the oscillator too, just to create a slight vibrato on it. So just a bit, something like that. All right, it's subtle, but that's what we want. You know what, let's do the same stuff with the LFO here. Put it on oscillator two. For the rate we want it sync with our host tempo here. And let's put it to, you can see it there, to one bar. Let's keep the face this way and just a bit. Then in the control panel right there, you have some more parameters we can work with. So let's detune the oscillator just a bit, just to give it a, a more vintage flavor. You can also add some what they call vintage noise, which is like the noise you could find from older scenes. And just a bit of drive on the filter. And to add that width, we add with the UE Let's try the chorus right there. All right, we are quite there. I think we just need to tweak the envelopes a bit. Let's add our FX and compare the original version and the noisemaker version. I think it sounds really close and the slight difference I think is just because it's not the same oscillators and you know the Diva is more aimed also to emulate more analog equipment as the tell is just a VST synth. So I think it's close enough for now. And to prove my point of 
doing the same kind of settings with any synth. Let's just do that real quick with another synth. Let's just take the retro synth on Logic, which is a really, really simple synth. So, so wave. Let's detune one just a bit. Here we go. Let's set a cutoff around here. We'll have just a bit of LFO, a bit of envelope as well. Uh, keyboard full. Let's put a chorus. And all right. One bar, filter envelope. And let's try that. I just need to transpose everything from an octave down. So I'm just gonna use Logic Transposer for the MIDI. So minus 12 semitones and Okay, so the envelopes are not quite there. So yeah, that's it. I think everything is a bit tweakable, but we're really in the ballpark of the type of sound of synth we wanted. So I hope you learned something today, and if you enjoyed it, please like and consider subscribing to the channel for more music content like that. I will also put the presets for the Tal and the Retro Synth on the video description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.